For folks who don't know about Music Theater Louisville, it's long-standing tradition has been, of course, it's everybody from here in the community. We're not bringing people in from New York or Chicago or anything else. These are your friends and neighbors, family members, who come audition for us every spring. And I think people would be amazed at the talent pool that exists here. And I think that's certainly the case in this show. There's some people of all ages that are really quite remarkable. The job of sort of trying to head up the company is, is pretty all-encompassing and um, I don't usually feel like I have a lot of time. Uh, I really kind of want to focus on making sure our customers have a great experience and that all three shows in the summer get put together and the stage one seasons get organized. And So I don't usually take these things on, but about once every four years I'll, I'll go out there. Guys and Dolls being one of my favorites, and the fact that I was going to direct it, I thought, this is great. I don't have to stick some other poor, unsuspecting director with me. Guys and Dolls, of course, is in your little pantheon of more popular Broadway musicals, and MTL has not performed it since 1986, so it's been a good long time. Been a few years since it was over there at Derby Dinner, and been probably at least 15 since a Broadway tour came through. So it seemed like a good time. Uh, it is one of those shows that I think everybody enjoys, where you've got um, non-threatening bad guys in it that are just kind of comical and uh, very charming female characters. I, I can tell you already from the run getting started that everybody loves Adelaide. As soon as she comes on stage, she sort of draws everybody in. You're sweet and so is Jelly, so put this down around your belly. <laughs> That's so sweet. <laughs> Ah, look, honey, about your present, uh, I was gonna get you a diamond wristwatch with a gold band and two rubies on the side. I didn't even get that. It's all right, I didn't. I'm sorry. Okay, I kind of like it when you forget to give me presents. It makes me feel like we're married. Pretty sure Julie's a Y-Pass graduate and, and sought her fortune in New York for some period of time and now has returned home to start a family and so, like many others, she's got a wealth of experience and she, she is just great. She really is one of those triple threats. She, and her Adelaide is um, very endearing. It would be easy for Adelaide to get sort of shrill or cartoonish or whatever, but she's got a real heart to the way she's playing it that I think people really are drawn to. Peter's been seen in this market quite a bit. He's been at Derby Dinner and a few things. He's done some um, Broadway touring stuff, most recently uh, Drowsy Chaperone. He was out on that tour, but he is relocated to Louisville. A lot of times directors get into the whole creating their concept and whatever, and I, <laughs> this one I think is conceptually very sound just the way it is. And one of the shows that bears its age very gracefully from a show that premiered in 1950, it somehow presents a slice of Americana in New York in particular that maybe never really existed, but it's the way a lot of us like to think it would be. You know, with these guys who are always on the run from the track to the poker table to the crap game and the dolls who know about all their shortcomings but love them anyway. Um, it's all those Damon Runyon characters that, that are just so entertaining. And, and the language <laughs> is unique and really funny to the ear and still fresh 60 years later. The one thing I sort of emphasize, particularly the four leads, you've got the two dual romantic stories. Nathan and Adelaide, they've been engaged for 14 years. That in itself is sort of a punchline, but we talk quite a bit about, so why are they together? I mean, they obviously genuinely do care about each other, and uh, between the actors and myself, we talked about, there's got to be some core to that relationship that allows it to endure, and that somehow keeps it from moving forward. And we really talked about the fact that I, I think they have a hard time envisioning the life that they might like to have, because how would it fit? I mean, Nathan's never going to be a guy who's going to be out there mowing his grass and uh, chatting with the neighbors, and it's hard to imagine Adelaide leaving her dance routines at the hot box to be part of the PTA. So as much as they see that as a world that they'd like to fit into, I think their whole life experience hasn't necessarily led them there. And I think that's where they get stuck and why they've been the way they are. The other couple are the uh, attraction of the opposites. You've got Sky Masterson, who is the very slick and probably most successful of all the gamblers that you see in the show. And you've got the idealist, Sarah Brown, who's working in the mission 
and uh, she has this very firm idea of what the man she dreams about will be like and it would be the complete opposite of what Skye is. And yet, as the story unfolds, you find that a lot of the qualities he has really are the qualities she's looking for. I mean, he's very loyal, he's smart, he proves himself to be a very honorable gentleman as the show goes on, and he finds in her, I think, a, a refreshing honesty and straightforwardness and feistiness that you don't originally expect. So it's not a complete shock that these two would find a way to be together. So anyway, working on those dynamics and trying to make those characters seem real, the humor in it is already written into the script without making it broad and sort of making them become comically unbelievable. So Guys and Dolls will continue this week, uh, Tuesday through Saturday, each evening at 7 o'clock at the Baumhardt Theater at the Kentucky Center. It's a, a visually beautiful show. Uh, the costumes, the sets, it's a lot of fun. It's a great show for the entire family, very family friendly. There is a matinee on Saturday at 1.30 and all the evenings at 7. And then I hope people will come back and join us for Big, based off the Tom Hanks movie from the 80s, which is a very, very fun story and will open up here in just a couple weeks and run the first two weekends in August. Call it dumb, call it clever.